Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. This video is diving into how to grow a load of food in poor soil. And what I mean by poor soil is either soil that has a lack of nutrients or a perceived lack of nutrients or soil that has compaction. And to also try and put across that you don't need perfect raised beds to grow a huge amount of food. So this video is full of strategies to follow as well as some key techniques that allow you to grow a load of food without actually needing much compost. So if you're struggling with compost quantity, this video is also for you. On the nutrient front, I'm coming from the perspective of poor soil in terms of nutrients, mainly just alluding to topsoil, which hasn't had compost added on. So this here is, is essentially mainly just topsoil with a little bit of compost, but we don't need to add any more because we're just adding the fertility through mulching. It's Jerusalem artichokes. They're a perennial that grows really well in pretty poor quality soil. Same in the other garden. There's also many other things as well that, that grow quite well. One is things like daikon radish, a lot of different grains as well. Uh, so like wheat and oats. Another one, your legumes. So peas grow pretty well. The other thing that grows really nicely is field beans. They're designed to grow on large scale in a field monoculture system uh, where there is going to be very little compost around, but they do grow really well. Sweet corn is another one to try out on poorer soil as well as sunflowers and then essentially any of your perennials because uh, the difference between perennials and annuals is that annuals are far more nutrient hungry and so it's a good place to put your perennials. I've also mentioned soil compaction. This leads to so many different types of issues. One is when it rains, the water can't actually soak down into the soil. And so it gets shoved off and that's taking some of the soil with it. Another one is by it being compacted, it's much harder for plant roots to grow. And that's gonna cause big issues when it comes to harvest and yields. It's not very favorable for a lot of the microbes. You want a nice fluffy soil, especially when you're growing annuals. And so what I found is the number one principle in terms of soil health is to keep plants growing in the soil for as long as possible. It's not always practical to do that on a home garden scale, especially in the kitchen garden with raised beds. Sometimes you'll have an, an empty raised bed over the winter months. And what I found is that rain causes compaction and it's something that I'm having to overcome in the other garden. I've kind of taken my eye off the ball a little bit with a few of the raised beds and it's led to just natural compaction, even though I've been following no dig principles for those beds. And so the way of combating that is with a tool called a broad fork. Now this isn't a broad fork, this is a, a pitch fork or a manure fork, uh, something that you can use as an alternative to broad forking. The idea with behind broad forking, it's, uh, it's a tool in kind of the, a, a no-till grower's tool shed. It serves a, it serves a purpose where if you have compact ground or you're opening up new ground you pop the fork in pull it back just so the the soil pops up that adds aeration um, I did a bit of experimentation with some of my raised beds in the kitchen garden and when I first put my hand in before broad forking I could only get it kind of the soil up to my fingers I then broad forked as and then I could sink my hand in really nice and deep and that's something that the annual plants are very much going to enjoy so it's nice to be able to open up that soil structure a little bit and yes technically it's causing disturbance to the soil but sometimes soil needs a bit of disturbance everything that i do is based on kind of long-term planning and so just like with permaculture you've got to sometimes take short-term drastic action in, in order to improve the, the long-term benefits. And so I see absolutely nothing wrong with broad forking. At the end of the day, I'm growing food and sometimes I need to adapt and adjust in order to ensure that I get the best yields possible. And so my strategy on a lot of the beds is to lightly broad fork over the beds and then straight away I'll apply, or within the next week or so, I'll apply some Jadam microbial solution and some lactobacteria, lactic acid bacteria i'll cover these in just a second uh, just to help replenish all of the microbes and then put a very light top dressing of homemade compost because i'm doing a whole growing season just using my own compost because i'm trying to show that you don't need to buy in great quantities of compost which is getting more and more expensive 
in order to grow a lot of nice food. When you're growing food in poor quality soil, you don't have the luxury of just being able to put on a load of compost and then just grow food. Luckily, there are loads of alternatives, which are usually much cheaper uh, than compost, but they do require a little bit more time. That's, that's the only difference. So one is creating loads of liquid amendments. Jadam microbial solution is one, which is where you use potatoes and leaf mold uh, to propagate natural microbes to then apply to the soil. Lactic acid bacteria is kind of known as the, uh, the, the police of the soil, the emergency soil microbe workers that really do uh, help in terms of improving aeration of the soil and again, repairing soil. Then you've got other things like a weed soak or a comfrey liquid feed. Now, a really nice way to make a comfrey liquid feed is by packing a bucket full of comfrey, putting a brick on top and then just leaving it for a few weeks. It's going to pull out all of the juices, but it's not going to smell because you're not mixing it with water. That's then a supplement that you can provide to your plants to provide nutrition in that form. Then of course you have more longer term strategies like applying different types of mulches that over time break down, add organic matter and add nutrients. So you don't just need to see compost as a be all and end all, there's all of these other ways that can supplement the nutritional and microbial needs of the soil and thus then helping the crops that you grow. So talking about poor soil, I want to bring potatoes into the equation as a tool for being able to improve soil over time. There's two different ways of doing it. One is when you're creating a new growing area. And so I've had great success in the past with using, this is kind of more, more so kind of spent hay now that is uh, starting to ever so slightly break down. This is a great mulch to put over. There are potatoes planted underneath. I just need to give this another mulch. The nice thing about potatoes is that they're really pretty good in poor quality soil. That's, that's one main reason. The other one is that when you're harvesting them, you've got to be a little bit destructive because you're trying to find all of the tubers. And then that's a really nice way to prepare the ground. And then when it comes to this time next year, this will be completely clear area. Most of the hay will have rotted down. I'll probably have maybe put over a load of seaweed over winter just to protect it and maybe some cardboard. And then it means this time next year, take off the, uh, the covering and it's gonna be some beautiful soil to start planting much hungrier annuals with. And so you can use potatoes essentially as a, as a marriage or a stepping stone between soil or just bare ground, putting in a bit of either manure or a bit of topsoil or just flipping over the turf like we're doing back there, then putting the mulch over getting a respectable harvest. It's never going to be as good as in a perfect kind of raised bed, but you will get a respectable harvest. I'm growing Sarpo mirrors for obvious reasons with them being blight resistant, but they're a nice tool to transition an area of land if you're in no particular rush or if you don't have any compost. And then next year you have beautiful ground to grow in. You can use other things, grass clippings also works well, or well decomposed wood chip, or even things like, uh, like animal bedding. All of these things work really well. I'm using potatoes in another way to kind of revitalize or regenerate my soil in raised beds this year. So this is kind of inspired by a book that I read called The Regenerative Grower's Guide to Garden Amendments by Nigel Palmer. And so it's essentially it's planting potatoes in a raised bed or you can do it in the ground etc. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to cause some destruction but I'm going to add in lots of things like line trenches with seaweeds, with nettles, with semi-decomposed compost, with dock leaves, with comfrey, plant the potatoes, cover back over, and I'm gonna plant the potatoes fairly close to one another, and so I'll have to go through all of the harvest at the end of the year. But then what, what's happened is that you've got all of those extra nutrients that's broken down. As you're harvesting, you're combining it together, and then I can put a cover crop on top of that. I might have some compost by then, or I could plant something else, maybe a winter cabbage. And so essentially what you're doing is you're growing potatoes. It's a nice way to, to get over compaction instead of doing a broad fork. Now, before I get any further with this, it's really important to know how annuals work in nature. Annuals are essentially a repair plant for damaged soil. 
They're the first plant to appear when soil is damaged. They're far more nutrient hungry than perennials. And very often the damage of the soil can, you know, kill off microbes. It releases a, a load of nutrients into the soil that the annuals then capitalize on and grow very quickly. And then over time, it progresses then into more of a perennially dominated environment. This isn't me giving up no dig, by the way. This is the foundation of, of how I grow following no dig principles. But it's equally as important to have a pragmatic approach towards growing food. And sometimes part of that relies on intuition. Part of that relies on knowing what the actual goal is producing food from the ground. And so as long as I have soil health in the back of my mind and I know that long term it's going to bring benefits, I have no shame in causing a lot of kind of destruction to a raised bed, grow a load of potatoes, add a load of fertility because it's going to bring great benefits over many years. And it's fine, you know. One thing that I forgot to mention about the potato technique of lining the trench with loads of organic material that's going to turn into organic matter is that it's just it's the exact same ingredients as you'd put on the compost bin but you don't have to wait months for that to break down instead you're just putting it directly into the ground and so in effect it is adding that compost to the ground just adding it more in terms of the raw material rather than the finished material and this is why I see that this is an absolutely kind of legitimate replacement for compost, which is usually the thing stopping us from growing in poor soil, but now it doesn't have to be. Now I've saved the easiest technique as kind of the last thing to share with you. Just quickly, this structure here is a very simple makeshift structure to throw some fleece over the tomatoes if it gets a little bit cold. But the, the, it relates to tomatoes and any other crops that have a single stem in a sense, but cover quite a large area of space, unlike something like beetroot, where you want, you're growing them quite close together and you, you need to make sure that the whole part or section of that bed is fertile. What you have with tomatoes, but also things like squash, say pumpkins, is the ability to create islands of fertility in poorer soil. And so what you do is you, you dig a big hole and you add two or three generous handfuls of compost. It could even be partly decomposed compost, uh, maybe some old manure. You could mix in some other things like uh, perhaps a little bit of rock dust. Just all of these things, that there's really no rules about it. But essentially what you're creating is an island within the soil that is very fertile. You plant that plant on top of all of this fertility. It then spreads out. You get an amazing crop. Um, you can supplement it with some liquid feeds as well, but you don't need the volume of compost to cover the whole area. We did this exact method for a load of pumpkins that were just grown on, on topsoil, but we needed very, very little compost in proportion to the amount of pumpkins we managed to get from that space. And so this is a really nice way of uh, being able to overcome poor quality soil. And so if you do have poor quality soil, or if you're looking at a way of growing a, a lot of food, but you're starting off just with bare ground, then using this method with squash in particular will bring you a lot of nutrition. One of the most powerful things that you can do for your garden, of course, is making your own compost. But I feel very often the process is overcomplicated. And so this video here shows you the lazy method I use to create compost because it might not be the coolest method, but it works and that's what matters.